Conquer Fear Gnostic Secrets to Crush Limiting Beliefs and Rule Your World. Before we dive into this powerful audiobook, make sure to hit the like button if you're ready to learn something life changing. Your support helps bring more audiobooks like this to the channel. Awakening to the Hidden Power Behind Fear. Fear has long been perceived as a formidable adversary in the human journey, an invisible force that, when left unchecked, has the power to paralyze the will, cloud the mind, and shrink the soul. Yet within the hidden corridors of the ancient mystical traditions, there lies a profound understanding of fear that transcends its superficial grip. Fear, in these teachings, is not the enemy it appears to be but rather a veiled teacher guiding the seeker toward a deeper understanding of the self and the cosmos. This book is an invitation to step into that deeper wisdom, to unmask fear's true nature, and to transmute it into a source of spiritual power. The aim of this work is to delve into the nature of fear from the perspective of Gnostic, Rosicrucian, and Hermetic teachings, mystical schools that have long regarded fear as a manifestation of ignorance, a symptom of our forgetfulness of the divine spark within. In the Gnostic tradition, for instance, fear is often seen as the result of living under the illusion of separation from the divine, a distortion perpetuated by the false powers of the material world, often symbolized by the figure of the demiurge. Likewise, in the esoteric teachings of the Rosicrucians, fear is understood as an energy that can be alchemically transformed much like lead into gold, through spiritual awakening and inner work. Through this lens, fear becomes not a force to be avoided or denied but an essential element in the process of spiritual evolution. The concept of transmutation is central to many of these traditions, particularly within the realms of alchemy and hermeticism. Just as the alchemist seeks to transform base metals into pure gold, the spiritual seeker is called to transform their fears into higher states of awareness, courage, and wisdom. This process is not simply a psychological exercise but a deep metaphysical journey that involves engaging with the unseen dimensions of existence. Fear, when understood properly, can serve as the prima materia, the raw, unrefined material needed for the soul's transformation. It is in confronting our fears, rather than running from them, that we find the key to our liberation. For it is said that what we fear most is often where our greatest power lies hidden. In this book, we will explore fear as a spiritual gateway, a threshold that every seeker must cross on the path to enlightenment. Each chapter will guide you through a deeper understanding of fear from the perspective of the great esoteric traditions offering both philosophical insights and practical tools for transmuting fear into power. These tools include meditation techniques, visualization exercises, and ancient rituals drawn from the teachings of the Rosicrucians, Gnostics, and other mystical schools. Through these practices, you will learn to confront your fears, dissolve the limiting beliefs that sustain them, and harness the energy of fear to fuel your journey toward self-mastery. The great mystics and sages understood that fear is often rooted in ignorance, ignorance of the true nature of the self, the universe, and the divine order that permeates all things. This ignorance gives rise to the illusion of separation, the belief that we are isolated beings subject to the whims of fate, powerless to change our circumstances. But the ancient wisdom contained within the teachings of the Gnostics and Rosicrucians reveals a deeper truth that we are, in fact, divine beings capable of shaping our reality through conscious will and gnosis, direct knowledge of the divine. The more we come to know ourselves, the more we dissolve the illusory fears that bind us. As we awaken to our inner divinity, we begin to reclaim the power that fear once held over us. This book is not merely a philosophical exploration of fear, it is a guide for practical transformation. The path it outlines is one that demands courage, discipline, and a willingness to face the shadow aspects of the self. But it is also a path of liberation, one that leads to a state of inner freedom where fear no longer dictates our actions or limits our potential. 
By engaging with the teachings and practices presented here, you will embark on a journey that takes you beyond the confines of ordinary existence and into the realm of the infinite. You will learn to transmute fear into the alchemical gold of spiritual wisdom and, in doing so, awaken to the limitless power that resides within your own being. Gnosis and Fear The Quest for Inner Knowledge the ancient Gnostic tradition teaches that the path to freedom begins with knowledge, not the kind that can be memorized from books or learned in classrooms, but an inner knowing, a profound realization of one's true nature and the divine forces that animate the cosmos. This sacred knowledge is known as Gnosis, a Greek word meaning knowledge, in its most esoteric sense. For the Gnostics, Gnosis is the key to liberation from the illusions that bind the soul to the material world, chief among them being fear. Fear, in this context, is not simply an emotional response to danger but a profound misunderstanding of reality, a veil of ignorance that clouds the soul's awareness of its divine origin. At the heart of Gnostic philosophy lies the belief that humanity has fallen into a state of ignorance due to its entrapment in the material realm which is ruled by the Demiurge, a false god who seeks to keep souls ensnared in the illusion of separation from the true divine source. This separation gives rise to fear because it perpetuates the illusion that we are small, isolated beings subject to forces beyond our control. The Gnostic texts, such as the Gospel of Thomas and the Pistis Sophia, describe the Demiurge as a tyrannical force that feeds off the fear and suffering of humanity maintaining its grip by keeping individuals ignorant of their divine nature. To conquer fear, one must first recognize it as a tool of the demiurge, a reflection of the false belief that we are powerless and disconnected from the greater cosmic order. Fear, in this light, is the product of ignorance. When we do not know who we truly are, we become vulnerable to external influences, circumstances, people, and even our own minds because we lack the grounding in our inner truth. The Gnostics taught that each soul contains within it a divine spark, a fragment of the ultimate source of all creation, which they referred to as the pleroma, or fullness. The path to liberation, then, is one of rediscovering this divine spark, of awakening to the realization that we are not mere victims of fate but co-creators of our reality. Fear dissolves in the light of this realization because it is only the false self, the ego, the temporary and limited identity, that experiences fear. The true self, the divine spark, is beyond fear because it is eternal and untouchable by the forces of the material world. To begin the journey of Gnosis, one must first engage in the practice of self-inquiry a process of peeling back the layers of false beliefs and conditioning that have been imposed upon the soul by the Demiurge and its minions. The goal is to uncover the deeper truths that lie hidden beneath the surface of ordinary consciousness. This process can be likened to descending into the depths of the unconscious mind, where fear resides in its most primal form. The Gnostics believed that fear is rooted in ignorance, ignorance of the self, ignorance of the cosmos, and ignorance of the divine plan that governs all things. By shining the light of awareness on these hidden fears, we begin to dissolve their power over us and reclaim our innate sovereignty. As you embark on this journey, begin by asking yourself, what are my deepest fears? Where do they originate? Are they truly reflective of reality, or are they products of false beliefs and illusions? Through this process of inquiry, you will likely discover that many of your fears are based on misconceptions, about yourself, about others, and about the nature of existence itself. These misconceptions are the chains that bind the soul to the material realm, keeping it from realizing its true potential. By uncovering and dismantling these false beliefs, you begin to free yourself from the grip of fear and open the door to deeper Gnosis. The practice of self-inquiry is not a one-time exercise but an ongoing process of self-reflection and inner exploration. As you continue to question the nature of your fears and the beliefs that sustain them, you will gradually come to recognize the illusory nature of these fears. 
you will begin to see that they are not rooted in reality but in the ego's distorted perception of reality. This is the first step toward transcending fear. Realizing that fear, at its core, is a product of ignorance, and that the only way to conquer it is through the acquisition of true knowledge, or Gnosis. With each layer of illusion that you strip away, you will move closer to the truth of who you are, a divine being of infinite power and potential, free from the limitations of the material world. By cultivating Gnosis, you will gain the clarity needed to see beyond the illusions that perpetuate fear. As you deepen your understanding of the divine nature within you, you will become increasingly impervious to the external forces that seek to keep you in a state of fear. The Demiurge, with all its false promises and illusions of control, will no longer have power over you, for you will have awakened to the truth of your own divinity. The quest for inner knowledge is a lifelong journey, but with each step forward, the grip of fear loosens, and the light of Gnosis grows brighter illuminating the path to spiritual freedom and mastery. This chapter has opened the door to the Gnostic perspective on fear, introducing the concept of Gnosis as the antidote to fear's grip. In the chapters that follow, we will delve deeper into the practices and teachings that can help you transmute fear into power, exploring the alchemical processes, rituals, and exercises that will guide you on this journey. The quest for inner knowledge is not without its challenges, but the rewards are profound. Liberation from fear, mastery over your reality, and the realization of your divine nature. Through Gnosis, you will reclaim the power that has always been yours, the power to conquer fear and shape your destiny. The Alchemy of Fear, Transmutation in the Rosicrucian Tradition In the esoteric tradition of Rosicrucianism, Fear is not a force to be vanquished or suppressed, but rather a primal energy to be transformed. Like the base metals in the alchemical process, fear represents the raw, chaotic material from which spiritual gold can be forged. The ancient alchemists, whose work often served as a metaphor for inner transformation, sought to transmute lead into gold through the application of spiritual principles. In the same way, the Rosicrucians understood that fear, when approached with the proper knowledge and intention, could be transmuted into wisdom, courage, and divine power. This chapter explores the alchemical process of transforming fear into spiritual awareness and strength, using Rosicrucian teachings as a guide. In alchemy, the process of transformation begins with the identification of prima materia, the raw, unrefined substance that must undergo purification and refinement. Fear, in the Rosicrucian view, is the prima materia of the soul, a dense and heavy energy that weighs down the spirit and binds it to the material realm. However, within this darkness lies the potential for immense spiritual growth. Fear, when properly understood and worked with, contains the seeds of enlightenment. The Rosicrucian teachings suggest that it is through confronting and working with fear that one can achieve the highest levels of spiritual transformation, just as the alchemist must endure the heat of the furnace to produce gold. The alchemical process involves several stages, each of which represents a different aspect of inner transformation. The first stage, negretto, or blackening, corresponds to the initial confrontation with fear. In this stage, one must descend into the depths of the unconscious mind, where fear resides in its most primal form. It is a time of inner darkness, where the individual must face their deepest fears and insecurities. In Rosicrucian symbolism, this stage is associated with death, the death of the ego and the dissolution of old patterns of thought and behavior that are rooted in fear. This process can be painful and disorienting as it involves the destruction of illusions and the breaking down of the false self. Yet, it is a necessary step on the path to spiritual rebirth. The second stage of the alchemical process is albedo, or, whitening. This stage represents purification and illumination. After confronting and dissolving the fears that bind the soul, the individual begins to experience a sense of clarity and inner light. In this stage, 
fear is no longer seen as an enemy, but as a teacher. The soul begins to understand that fear was never a sign of weakness or failure, but a gateway to deeper wisdom and strength. The alchemical axiom, solve et coagula, meaning, dissolve and coagulate, reflects this process of breaking down the old in order to create something new. Fear, once dissolved through the heat of inner inquiry and reflection, gives way to courage and insight, which are then, coagulated, into a new, more refined form of consciousness. The final stage of alchemy is rubedo, or, reddening, which symbolizes the achievement of spiritual mastery. In this stage, the soul has successfully transmuted fear into a higher state of awareness, embodying the qualities of the philosopher's stone, an alchemical symbol for the perfected self. The individual has not only confronted and overcome fear but has integrated the lessons it offered into their being. In Rosicrucian teachings, this stage represents the resurrection of the spirit, the rebirth of the individual into a state of divine power and wisdom. Fear, which once held the soul captive, is now a source of strength, a reminder of the soul's journey through the trials of transformation. To engage in this alchemical process of transmuting fear, the Rosicrucians taught a variety of spiritual practices, including meditation, visualization, and ritual. One of the most powerful practices involves the visualization of fear as lead, a dense, heavy metal that represents the unrefined aspects of the self. Through meditation, one visualizes this lead being placed into the alchemical furnace, where it is subjected to intense heat. As the lead melts and begins to transform, it gradually changes color, first becoming silver and then gold, symbolizing the purification and refinement of fear into courage and wisdom. This visualization serves as a symbolic act of inner transformation, helping the individual to reframe their relationship with fear and recognize it as an opportunity for growth. Begin this practice by finding a quiet space where you can sit comfortably and focus your attention inward. Close your eyes and take several deep breaths, allowing your body to relax and your mind to become still. Visualize a lump of lead sitting in your hands. This lead represents your fear, its weight, its density, its heaviness. Feel its presence, acknowledging the ways in which it has burdened you and held you back. Now, imagine a great furnace before you, its flames flickering with a radiant golden light. Slowly, place the lead into the furnace and watch as the flames begin to envelop it. As the lead melts, visualize it changing color, first becoming silver and then gold. With each transformation, feel the energy of fear dissolving, giving way to a sense of lightness and strength. Allow the gold to symbolize the new energy that is arising within you, an energy of courage, wisdom, and inner power. This practice can be repeated whenever you feel the weight of fear pressing upon you. By engaging with the alchemical symbolism of transmutation, you begin to shift your perception of fear, recognizing it not as an obstacle but as a stepping stone on the path to spiritual mastery. The Rosicrucians believed that all obstacles, including fear, are opportunities for growth and transformation. By working with fear in this way, you are participating in the ancient alchemical process of refining the soul, turning the lead of your fears into the gold of spiritual wisdom and strength. In the Rosicrucian tradition, fear is seen as both the challenge and the catalyst for spiritual transformation. It is through the confrontation and transmutation of fear that the soul evolves, ascending from the darkness of ignorance into the light of divine knowledge. Just as the alchemist must endure the heat of the furnace to produce gold, so too must we endure the trials of fear to achieve spiritual mastery. Through the process of alchemical transformation, fear becomes not something to be feared, but something to be embraced a necessary part of the journey toward spiritual enlightenment and personal empowerment. As you continue to work with the teachings of this chapter, remember that fear is not a sign of weakness, but an invitation to grow.
The Rosicrucians understood that the soul's journey is one of continual transformation, and fear is a key part of that process. By transmuting fear through the alchemical practices outlined here, you will begin to unlock the hidden power within you, the power to rise above limitation and step into the fullness of your spiritual potential. Fear, once transformed, becomes the very force that propels you toward your highest self, the divine alchemist within. The Hidden Wisdom of Limiting Beliefs Within the labyrinth of the mind, limiting beliefs are the unseen chains that bind the soul to a narrow existence. These beliefs, often born from the subconscious, act like invisible architects, shaping the walls of our perceived reality. In the esoteric traditions of Gnosticism and Hermeticism, the mind is seen as the ultimate creative force, and belief is the tool through which it manifests reality. To the mystic, limiting beliefs are like veils obscuring the divine truth within, keeping the soul confined within the illusion of separation and fear. In this chapter, we will explore the hidden wisdom within these limiting beliefs and how, like fear, they can be transmuted into the foundation of a higher consciousness. Limiting beliefs are constructed by the ego, the false self that is bound to the material realm. From a Gnostic perspective, the ego operates under the influence of the demiurge, the false god who governs the material world. The demiurge, representing the forces of ignorance and limitation, implants false beliefs about the self, convincing the soul that it is weak, incomplete, and disconnected from the divine. These beliefs are often formed in early life, influenced by societal conditioning, trauma, and the external voices of authority figures. Over time, these beliefs harden into fixed thought patterns, creating a distorted reality that limits the soul's potential. To break free from this mental prison, the esoteric teachings advise a deep exploration of the subconscious, where these beliefs reside, and a process of conscious deconstruction. In the Hermetic tradition, the mind is viewed as a mirror of the cosmos. The principle of mentalism, one of the seven Hermetic laws, teaches that the all is mind, and that reality itself is a reflection of the thoughts and beliefs held in the mind. Just as the universe is created through the mental patterns of the divine, so too is personal reality shaped by the individual's beliefs. Limiting beliefs, therefore, are like distortions in the mirror of the mind, preventing the true reflection of the soul from being seen. The task of the hermetic initiate is to cleanse this mirror, removing the distortions caused by limiting beliefs and restoring the mind to its original, divine clarity. This process is known as mental transmutation, a practice of consciously transforming negative thought patterns into positive, empowering ones. To begin the work of dismantling limiting beliefs, we must first become aware of them. These beliefs often operate in the background of our consciousness, influencing our actions and decisions without our conscious awareness. Journaling is a powerful tool for bringing these beliefs to the surface. Start by identifying areas in your life where you feel stuck or limited. Write down any thoughts or feelings that arise when you think about these areas. For example, if you feel blocked in your career, ask yourself, what do I believe about my ability to succeed? If you uncover a belief like, I'm not good enough, or, success is for other people, not for me, you have found one of the limiting beliefs that is shaping your reality. The simple act of identifying these beliefs is the first step in reclaiming your power. Once a limiting belief has been identified, the next step is to deconstruct it. In Gnostic teachings, the process of inner liberation begins with the recognition that the material world, and the beliefs that govern it, are illusions. Limiting beliefs are not absolute truths, they are simply constructs of the ego and the subconscious mind. To break free from these illusions, you must challenge the validity of each limiting belief. Ask yourself, is this belief truly aligned with my divine nature? For example, if the belief is, I'm not good enough, question its origin. Where did this belief come from? Was it implanted by an external authority, 
such as a parent or teacher, or did it arise from a painful experience? By tracing the belief back to its source, you can begin to see it for what it is, an illusion that no longer serves you. As you challenge and deconstruct each limiting belief, it is essential to replace it with a new, empowering belief. This process is known in Hermeticism as mental transmutation. Just as the alchemist transforms lead into gold, so too must the initiate transform negative beliefs into positive ones. For example, if the limiting belief is, I'm not good enough, the new belief might be, I am a reflection of the divine, and I am worthy of success. To reinforce this new belief, it must be repeated consistently, both through affirmations and through aligned action. Affirmations are a way of planting the new belief into the subconscious mind, where it can take root and begin to shape reality. Aligned action, on the other hand, is the process of acting in accordance with the new belief, even if the old belief still lingers in the background. Over time, as the new belief is affirmed and acted upon, it will begin to override the old belief, and the reality it creates will shift accordingly. The esoteric understanding of belief systems teaches that beliefs are the building blocks of reality. In Kabbalistic thought, the tree of life represents the interconnectedness of all aspects of existence, from the material to the divine. At the base of the tree lies the world of Asaya, the physical realm, which is shaped by the energies and beliefs that flow from the higher realms. Limiting beliefs are like blockages in this flow, preventing the soul from accessing the higher wisdom and potential that reside within. By clearing these blockages through the process of mental transmutation, the individual opens the channels for divine energy to flow freely, allowing for the manifestation of a higher reality. As you continue the process of identifying and deconstructing limiting beliefs, remember that this is not a one-time event but an ongoing practice. New beliefs, both limiting and empowering, are constantly being formed as you navigate through life. The key is to remain vigilant, continuously questioning the beliefs that arise and choosing only those that align with your highest self. Through this practice, you will become the conscious architect of your reality, no longer bound by the invisible chains of the subconscious mind. Instead, you will walk the path of the initiate, fully aware of your power to shape your destiny through the wisdom of the mind. By engaging in the work of dismantling limiting beliefs, you are participating in one of the most profound acts of spiritual liberation. As the Rosicrucians and Gnostics taught, true freedom comes not from external circumstances, but from within. The more you align your beliefs with the truth of your divine nature, the more you will begin to experience the reality that reflects this truth. In this way, the hidden wisdom of limiting beliefs is revealed, they are not obstacles, but opportunities for transformation, guiding you ever closer to the realization of your infinite potential. The Demiurge, Overcoming the Architect of Fear In the vast tapestry of Gnostic cosmology, one figure looms as the architect of limitation, ignorance, and fear, the Demiurge. This being, depicted as a false god, is said to have created the material world in an imperfect image, keeping souls trapped within its confines. The Demiurge, symbolizing external authority and control, represents all that seeks to bind the soul in ignorance. To overcome the fear that arises from this material world, one must confront and transcend the power of the Demiurge. Only by seeing beyond the illusions he has woven can the individual reclaim their divine birthright, freedom, wisdom, and the power to shape reality. The Demiurge's rule over the material world is one of deception. In Gnostic texts, this entity is often portrayed as a creator who believes himself to be the ultimate authority. He declares, I am the only God, and there is none other, blind to the higher realms of spiritual truth beyond his limited dominion. In this way, the Demiurge acts as a metaphor for all external forces, societal, political, or psychological that impose false limits on the individual. The fear generated by these forces is one of control, 
convincing the soul that it is powerless, subject to the whims of external events and rulers. Yet, as the Gnostic initiate learns, this is an illusion. The true essence of the soul lies beyond the demiurge's reach, connected to the higher, ineffable realms of divine knowledge and freedom. Fear thrives in the shadows cast by the demiurge's illusions. It is a weapon wielded to keep the soul in a state of ignorance and separation from its divine origins. When one believes in the absolute authority of the material world, whether it be in the form of governments, institutions, or even deeply held personal beliefs, fear becomes a constant companion. The fear of death, failure, rejection, and loss all stem from the false belief that the material world is the ultimate reality. The Gnostic path, however, teaches that these fears are baseless, mere projections of the demiurge's shadow. The soul, being eternal and of divine essence, is beyond the reach of such limitations. It is only when the soul mistakenly identifies with the body and the external world that fear gains a foothold. The process of overcoming the demiurge begins with inner knowledge, Gnosis. Gnosis is not simply intellectual understanding but a deep, experiential realization of one's divine nature. It is the knowledge that the self is not merely a physical body or a collection of thoughts and emotions but a spark of the divine, a piece of the infinite source. The demiurge, with all his power over the material realm, has no authority over this divine spark. Thus, the key to overcoming fear is not to wage war against external forces but to transcend them through inner realization. Once the soul recognizes its divine nature, the illusions of the material world, including the authority of the demiurge, begin to dissolve. One of the most powerful tools for reclaiming sovereignty from the demiurge is ritual. In the Gnostic tradition, rituals are not merely symbolic gestures but potent acts of spiritual reclamation. A ritual aimed at overcoming the influence of the demiurge might involve invoking higher spiritual forces, such as the divine spark or the eons, higher spiritual beings in Gnostic cosmology, to break the hold of fear and external authority. This ritual can be as simple as lighting a candle in a darkened room, symbolizing the light of Gnosis illuminating the darkness of ignorance. As the candle burns, the initiate speaks words of intention calling upon the divine within to rise and break the chains of fear. Through this symbolic act, the initiate begins the process of reclaiming their mind, spirit, and life from the control of external forces. The ultimate victory over the demiurge is not destruction but transcendence. The Gnostic path does not advocate for a battle against the material world but rather for an awakening to the reality that lies beyond it. The material world, while full of limitations, is also a field of learning and transformation. By recognizing the illusory nature of the demiurge's rule, the soul can use the material world as a tool for spiritual growth rather than a prison. Each fear, each limitation encountered in life, becomes an opportunity to deepen one's connection to the divine, to realize that the soul is not bound by the constraints of the physical realm. As you engage with the concept of the demiurge in your own life, reflect on the external forces that seem to hold power over you. These forces might be societal expectations, family pressures, financial limitations, or even deeply ingrained beliefs about yourself. Ask yourself, how much of this power is real, and how much of it is an illusion created by the demiurge within your own mind? By recognizing the illusory nature of these external controls, you begin the process of reclaiming your power. Fear, once a force that kept you bound, becomes a guide, showing you where the illusions lie and where your soul seeks liberation. To aid in this process, perform the ritual of releasing the demiurge's hold. Begin by creating a sacred space, free from distractions. Light a candle and focus on its flame, seeing it as the light of Gnosis within you. As you gaze into the flame, speak these words or similar ones. I call upon the divine spark within. I release the illusions of fear, control, and limitation. 
I am sovereign over my mind, my spirit, and my destiny. The light of truth guides me, and the power of the demiurge holds no sway over me. As you speak these words, feel the chains of external control dissolving. Know that the authority over your life belongs to you, not to any external force. Overcoming the demiurge is a metaphor for transcending the fear and limitations imposed by the material world. It is a reminder that true power comes not from external sources but from within. By engaging with this ancient wisdom and performing rituals of liberation, you can begin to dissolve the illusions that keep you bound to fear. The path of Gnosis is the path of reclaiming sovereignty over your mind and spirit, seeing beyond the veils of ignorance, and stepping into the full realization of your divine nature. As you continue on this journey, fear will no longer be an enemy to be defeated but a signpost leading you ever closer to the truth of who you are, a soul beyond all limitation, free to create and shape your reality. Fear and the Subconscious, Occult Psychology of the Mind The subconscious mind is a vast and enigmatic realm, housing the hidden aspects of our psyche. In esoteric and occult traditions, the subconscious is viewed not merely as a repository of memories and experiences but as a powerful force that influences the direction of our lives. Fear, in this context, is often understood as a deeply ingrained program lurking in the depths of the subconscious and shaping our reactions, decisions, and beliefs without our conscious awareness. To conquer fear and free ourselves from limiting patterns, we must journey into this hidden terrain, confronting the shadows within and reprogramming the subconscious mind to reflect our true, divine nature. The concept of the subconscious mind has been explored in various mystical traditions. In Hermeticism, the subconscious is seen as the mirror of the soul, reflecting both light and shadow. It holds the imprints of past experiences, traumas, and conditioning, and it is here that fear takes root, often unnoticed by the conscious mind. Fear stored in the subconscious operates as an unseen force, subtly shaping our behavior and limiting our potential. The Rosicrucians, too, regarded the subconscious as a vast inner temple, a space where alchemical transformation could take place. They believed that by bringing the light of awareness to this hidden realm, the soul could transmute fear into wisdom and strength, unlocking the higher faculties of the mind. In modern psychology, the subconscious is often equated with the unconscious mind, where repressed memories, desires, and unresolved emotions reside. From the perspective of occult psychology, however, the subconscious is not merely a passive storehouse of these elements. It is an active participant in the creation of reality. Every thought, emotion, and belief held in the subconscious sends ripples through the energetic field, influencing not only our internal state but the external circumstances we attract. Fear, in this context, becomes a powerful magnet, drawing to us experiences that reinforce our deepest anxieties. To break free from the cycle of fear, we must first become aware of the patterns that reside in the subconscious, bringing them into the light of conscious understanding. One of the most potent tools in the occult tradition for accessing and transforming the subconscious is visualization. Visualization, when practiced with intent and focus, serves as a bridge between the conscious and subconscious mind. Hermetic practitioners often use visualization techniques to reprogram the subconscious, planting new seeds of thought and emotion that overwrite fear-based patterns. In this practice, the practitioner imagines a symbol of fear, perhaps a dark figure or an oppressive shadow, confronting it with the light of higher awareness. Through repeated visualizations, the fear is gradually dissolved, replaced by a symbol of strength or illumination. This simple yet profound practice allows the practitioner to reclaim authority over the mind, redirecting the energy of fear into positive, empowering thought forms. Another key aspect of working with the subconscious in occult psychology is the use of symbols and archetypes. Symbols bypass the rational mind and speak directly to the subconscious, 
where they can instigate deep and lasting transformation. In this way, symbols function as keys, unlocking the hidden chambers of the psyche where fear resides. For example, in the Hermetic tradition, the pentagram is often used as a protective symbol, representing the mastery of spirit over matter. When used in meditation or ritual, the pentagram can serve as a potent tool for banishing fear from the subconscious. The act of visualizing the pentagram surrounding oneself creates a psychic barrier, empowering the individual to confront and neutralize fear on a deep, energetic level. The journey of reprogramming the subconscious is not a one-time event but a continuous process of self-exploration and transformation. As you begin to work with these occult techniques, it is essential to approach the subconscious with compassion and patience. Fear often arises as a protective mechanism, an attempt by the subconscious to shield us from perceived dangers. However, these mechanisms, once necessary for survival, may become outdated or misaligned with our higher purpose. By consciously engaging with the subconscious mind, you can rewrite these programs, replacing fear with love, doubt with faith, and limitation with infinite potential. To begin this process, first reflect on the moments in your life where fear seems to take hold, and allow yourself to trace these fears back to their roots. Ask yourself where these fears may have originated, whether through personal experiences, societal conditioning, or ancestral patterns. As you recognize the origins of your fears, imagine them as shadows cast upon the subconscious, lingering and waiting to be illuminated. Allow yourself to confront these fears, not with resistance, but with curiosity, understanding that they are merely projections of past limitations. As you deepen your engagement with this inner process, Visualize the fears you have uncovered as dark, formless entities, and in your mind's eye, bring forth a radiant light that emerges from within your heart. Imagine this light expanding and growing, filling every corner of your being, pushing the shadows to the edges of your awareness. Watch as these shadows dissolve into the light, leaving behind only clarity and stillness. In their place, Envision powerful symbols of strength and protection, perhaps a pentagram, a blazing star, or a radiant rose, glowing with energy and surrounding you with their protective force. Through continued practice, this reprogramming of the subconscious becomes second nature. Each time a fear or limiting belief arises, you can meet it with this inner light, transforming its energy into something that serves your highest good. In time, you will notice that the grip of fear loosens, allowing you to move through life with greater freedom and power. You will realize that the subconscious, once the source of hidden fear, has become a wellspring of inner strength and wisdom, guiding you toward your true potential. By bringing the light of awareness into the depths of your subconscious, you are embarking on a profound journey of self-mastery. You are not only confronting the shadows of fear but transforming them into the very elements of your spiritual evolution. In this way, the subconscious becomes a sacred space, a temple of transformation where fear is no longer an obstacle but a gateway to greater understanding. As you continue to explore the mysteries of your inner world, remember that each shadow you encounter holds within it the potential for alchemical change waiting to be transmuted into the gold of your higher self. The Fear of Death, a Gnostic Perspective Among the many fears that humanity faces, the fear of death looms as the greatest. It is the ultimate mystery, the final threshold, and for many, the greatest source of anxiety. From the perspective of the Gnostic tradition, however, the fear of death is seen not as a natural response to the unknown but as an illusion fostered by ignorance. The Gnostics believed that fear of death is one of the deepest forms of bondage to the material world. It is perpetuated by the Demiurge, the false creator God, who keeps souls trapped in the material realm through fear and deception. To transcend the fear of death is to transcend the limitations of the material world and awaken to the eternal, divine spark that lies within each of us. 
Gnosticism teaches that death is not an end but a transition, a passage from one realm of existence to another. The Gnostics viewed life in the material world as a temporary sojourn, a period of spiritual exile from the Pleroma, the realm of pure light and divine consciousness. In this worldview, the fear of death is rooted in a misunderstanding of the true nature of existence. Rather than being a final cessation, death is seen as a return to the source, a shedding of the physical body and the reunification of the soul with its divine origin. To fear death, then, is to fear one's own liberation from the constraints of the material realm. The esoteric traditions of both Gnosticism and Rosicrucianism speak of the soul's immortality. According to these teachings, the soul is a spark of the divine, an eternal essence that transcends both time and space. This eternal spark is trapped within the physical body during one's earthly life, but it remains unaffected by the limitations of the physical world. The body may die, but the soul continues on its journey through the cosmos. Understanding this truth is key to overcoming the fear of death. It is only through ignorance, through identification with the material self rather than the eternal soul, that we experience death as something to be feared. The more we align ourselves with the awareness of the soul's immortality, the more we can transcend the limitations of the physical world and dissolve the fear of death. In the teachings of Rosicrucianism, death is seen as a necessary transformation in the journey toward spiritual enlightenment. The Rosicrucians, much like the Gnostics, view life as a preparation for the great transition. They understood death not as a defeat or loss, but as a crucial moment of spiritual growth, a passage from one state of consciousness to a higher one. To die in the physical sense is to be reborn in the spiritual sense, and this process of death and rebirth is mirrored in the alchemical process of transformation. In this view, the fear of death is a refusal to embrace the natural cycle of dissolution and regeneration. By accepting death as part of the alchemical process, one can confront it not with dread, but with openness and readiness for the next stage of the soul's journey. The fear of death often stems from our attachment to the physical body and material existence. When we view ourselves as merely physical beings, death appears as the ultimate annihilation, the end of everything we know. But in Gnostic thought, this identification with the body is seen as a fundamental error. The body is a vessel a temporary form that houses the soul during its sojourn in the material world. To overcome the fear of death, we must first transcend this attachment to the physical self. We must come to see the body as a tool or vehicle, one that we use in this life but ultimately leave behind as we continue our journey toward spiritual wholeness. This shift in perspective is essential to dissolving the fear of death for it allows us to embrace the impermanence of the body while recognizing the eternity of the soul. One of the most powerful practices for overcoming the fear of death is meditation on the eternal nature of the soul. In this practice, we focus on the inner light, the divine spark that resides within each of us. By turning inward and connecting with this light, we remind ourselves that we are not merely physical beings but eternal, spiritual entities. This light is the essence of our true self, and it is unaffected by the changes and transitions of the material world. As we meditate on this light, we allow its presence to fill our awareness, dissolving any fear of death or attachment to the physical body. Over time, this practice helps us to shift our identification from the material to the spiritual, and in doing so, we transcend the fear of death. To further deepen this practice, we can visualize the moment of death not as a moment of loss or cessation, but as a moment of liberation. Imagine yourself standing at the threshold of death, ready to leave behind the physical body. Rather than feeling fear, visualize a sense of peace and release as your soul sheds its material form and expands into the infinite. See yourself surrounded by light, embraced by the Divine Presence and guided toward higher realms of consciousness. In this visualization, death becomes not a dark and frightening event, 
but a joyful return to the source of all life. By repeatedly visualizing this moment, we train our mind to approach death with calm and acceptance, rather than fear and resistance. In esoteric thought, confronting the fear of death is not merely about coming to terms with the inevitable end of physical life. It is about recognizing the illusory nature of the material world and awakening to the truth of our eternal nature. Death, from this perspective, is not an ending, but a passage, a return to the divine realms from which we came. By dissolving the fear of death, we also dissolve our attachment to the material realm and free ourselves from the limitations of the physical self. This is the ultimate liberation, the realization that we are infinite, eternal beings, forever connected to the divine source. As you move forward on your spiritual journey, remember that the fear of death is simply one aspect of the greater illusion that keeps us bound to the material world. By confronting this fear, you are taking a significant step toward awakening to your true nature. You are not your body, and death is not the end. It is a passage, a transformation, and an opportunity for the soul to continue its journey toward enlightenment. In this light, death becomes not something to fear, but something to embrace, a doorway to greater wisdom, understanding, and spiritual freedom. Overcoming the fear of failure, the esoteric law of success. In the realm of human experience, the fear of failure is often more paralyzing than the prospect of failure itself. It haunts every decision, clouds the mind with doubts, and shrinks the spirit into submission. Yet, from the vantage point of the esoteric traditions, failure is not a force to be feared but a necessary initiatory step toward mastery. Just as an alchemist must face the chaos of dissolution to transmute lead into gold, so too must the individual face the trials of failure to refine their soul and awaken to higher truths. The fear of failure is nothing more than the fear of transformation, a reluctance to step into the crucible of growth and emerge on the other side, reborn and strengthened. Esoteric traditions, particularly those of the Gnostics and Hermeticists, view failure not as a terminal event but as part of the soul's alchemical journey. In alchemy, the concept of solve et coagula, dissolve and coagulate, is central to understanding transformation. Failure represents the solve, the breaking down of false structures, beliefs, and identities. It is the necessary dissolution of what no longer serves the soul's growth. In this way, failure is an essential process in the path to wisdom. The fear of failure arises when we cling to the old forms, refusing to let go of the familiar and comfortable, even when they hinder our progress. The true alchemist sees failure as a signpost on the road to self-realization, an opportunity to release outdated patterns and create space for something more aligned with the soul's divine purpose. When we examine the nature of failure from an occult perspective, we discover that it is often tied to the fear of judgment, both from others and from ourselves. In the Rosicrucian tradition, it is taught that true success comes not from external validation but from inner alignment with higher principles. Failure, then, becomes a valuable teacher, revealing where we are out of harmony with the divine order. Each failure offers a mirror, reflecting the areas of our life where we need greater balance, insight, or courage. The Rosicrucians encourage us to embrace these reflections without self-condemnation, understanding that the path of mastery is not a linear ascent but a spiral of growth, filled with challenges that test and strengthen the soul. To overcome the fear of failure, one must first redefine what failure means. In Gnostic teachings, the material world is viewed as an imperfect reflection of the spiritual realm, and as such, the outcomes of worldly pursuits are often illusory. The Gnostic understanding of failure, therefore, is less about external results and more about the inner state of being. Failure in the material sense may signify a lesson learned, a karmic cycle completed, or a stepping stone toward spiritual elevation. When we align with this higher perspective, 
we begin to see that what the ego perceives as failure is often a necessary part of the soul's growth. This shift in perception dissolves the fear of failure, replacing it with a sense of curiosity and openness to the unknown. Each failure becomes an initiation, a doorway into deeper wisdom and understanding. One of the most powerful tools for overcoming the fear of failure is the hermetic principle of cause and effect. This principle, which is one of the seven universal laws outlined in the Kabbalion, teaches that every action has a corresponding reaction, and that success is the natural result of the right causes being set into motion. In this view, Failure is not a final destination but a signal that the appropriate causes have not yet been aligned with the desired effect. This understanding empowers the individual to take responsibility for their reality, knowing that success is not a matter of chance or external circumstances, but the inevitable result of consistent, aligned action. When we fear failure, we give power to external forces and lose sight of our innate ability to shape our destiny. By embracing the principle of cause and effect, we reclaim that power, understanding that failure is simply an indicator of misalignment, not an insurmountable obstacle. Practically, overcoming the fear of failure requires cultivating resilience and detachment. Resilience, in the esoteric sense, is the ability to remain centered and unwavering in the face of life's trials. It is born from the knowledge that the soul is eternal and that all material experiences, whether labeled as success or failure, are transient. Detachment, on the other hand, involves releasing the ego's need for validation and approval, allowing oneself to act without being bound by the outcome. Together, resilience and detachment form the foundation of true mastery. When we are no longer afraid of failure, we are free to pursue our highest potential without hesitation, knowing that every step, whether it leads to success or failure, is part of the soul's sacred journey. One practical exercise for overcoming the fear of failure is a journaling practice based on the hermetic law of cause and effect. Begin by reflecting on a recent failure or fear of failure. Write down the circumstances surrounding this event, and then ask yourself, what causes did I set into motion? Were my actions, thoughts, or beliefs aligned with my desired outcome. Through this process of self-inquiry, you will begin to see the patterns that led to the perceived failure. Next, ask yourself, what new causes can I set into motion to create a different outcome? This exercise shifts your focus from the fear of failure to the empowerment of taking action. By identifying the root causes of your experiences, you can begin to consciously create new patterns of success. Another powerful tool for dissolving the fear of failure is visualization. In esoteric traditions, visualization is a method of aligning the mind with higher realities. Begin by closing your eyes and visualizing a situation where you fear failure. Allow the fear to arise, and then, as you breathe deeply, imagine yourself stepping through the fear as though it were a doorway. On the other side of this doorway, visualize yourself standing in a place of calm, confidence, and power. See yourself having moved through the failure, stronger and wiser for the experience. This visualization helps to reframe failure as a necessary step in the journey to success, rather than an endpoint. The fear of failure is not a force to be avoided but an invitation to deeper growth. From the perspective of Gnosticism, Hermeticism, and Rosicrucianism, failure is part of the alchemical process of transformation. It is the breaking down of the old to make way for the new. When we understand failure as an essential component of the soul's evolution, we no longer shrink from it in fear. Instead, we embrace it as a teacher guiding us toward greater wisdom, resilience, and mastery. The power of silence, conquering fear through stillness. Silence, in the mystical traditions of the world, is far more than the absence of sound, it is a gateway to profound spiritual power. In the quiet of the mind, the soul finds its true strength, and fear loses its grip. 
Fear thrives on noise, on the chatter of doubts, the clamor of external pressures, and the constant hum of expectations. But in silence, fear can no longer sustain itself. It dissolves in the vastness of stillness, revealing the eternal peace that lies beneath the surface of our thoughts. The ancient mystics knew that silence is not merely a passive state but an active, vibrant force capable of transforming the self and conquering the fears that bind us. The Rosicrucians, in their secret teachings, often spoke of the silence of the adept, a practice where one withdraws from the distractions of the outer world and enters a space of internal stillness. In this silence, the adept engages in deep contemplation, not of external knowledge but of the inner mysteries of the soul. Here, the noise of fear is stripped away, and the deeper, more eternal truths of existence come to the fore. The adept understands that fear is a product of the restless mind, a creation of the ego clinging to its identity and attachments. Through silence, the mind is stilled, and the ego's hold weakens. In this state, the practitioner experiences the presence of the divine within, realizing that fear is an illusion of separation from the source. Gnostic teachings also emphasize the importance of silence in the path to Gnosis, the inner knowledge of the divine. Silence, in this context, is the space where one communes directly with the truth of existence, bypassing the filters of the intellect and the distortions of the material world. The Gnostics believed that the material world, governed by the Demiurge, is filled with distractions designed to keep the soul from remembering its divine origins. Fear, they taught, is one of the Demiurge's most potent tools, keeping souls trapped in ignorance and bondage. Silence, then, becomes a revolutionary act, a way of reclaiming one's sovereignty from the false rulers of the material realm. In silence, the soul reconnects with the pleroma, the fullness of the divine, and the fears of the lower world fall away, unable to survive in the presence of such higher knowledge. The Hermeticists, too, understood the transformative power of silence. In the Hermetic tradition, silence is seen as the first step toward mastery of the self and the world. The famous Hermetic axiom, the lips of wisdom are closed, except to the ears of understanding reflects this belief. True wisdom is not found in the loud proclamations of the ego, but in the quiet, inward journey where the soul listens to the subtle truths of the cosmos. Hermetic silence is not just the absence of speech but the deliberate quieting of the mind, emotions, and desires so that the deeper will of the divine can be heard. In this silence, the hermetic practitioner learns to command their inner forces, aligning their will with the higher cosmic order. Fear, in this state, becomes irrelevant, as the practitioner gains the strength to move through the world with calm and centered purpose. To conquer fear through silence, one must first practice the art of stillness. In today's world, where constant activity and noise are the norms, stillness can seem elusive. However, this practice is not about isolating oneself from the world. Rather, it is about cultivating an inner sanctuary of calm, regardless of external circumstances. Begin by setting aside time each day to sit in silence, allowing the mind to settle. As thoughts arise, simply observe them without judgment or attachment. Do not engage with them, and do not try to silence them by force. Instead, let them pass through, like clouds drifting across the sky. As you practice this, you will notice that beneath the surface of these thoughts is a deep, abiding stillness, a space that is untouched by the turbulence of the mind. In this space, fear has no place, for it is a product of the mind's distractions, not of the soul's reality. One powerful exercise to cultivate the power of silence is to use the breath as a focal point. Begin by sitting comfortably and closing your eyes. Inhale deeply, feeling the breath fill your body, and then exhale slowly, releasing any tension or restlessness. As you breathe, focus on the sound of your breath, letting it guide you into a state of deeper relaxation. With each exhale, 
Imagine releasing any fears or worries that have been weighing on you. Feel them dissipate into the silence. With each inhale, imagine drawing in the peace and strength of the divine. As you continue this practice, allow the silence between each breath to lengthen. In these silent spaces, you will begin to feel the presence of a deeper stillness, a stillness that holds within it the power to dissolve fear and reveal your true strength. In the moments of stillness that you cultivate, you will find that fear gradually loses its hold. It is in this silence that the soul remembers its divine origins and reconnects with the eternal wisdom that lies beyond the noise of the material world. When the mind is quiet, the soul is free to rise above the illusions of fear, and the presence of the divine within becomes clear. In this state, the fears that once seemed overwhelming appear as shadows cast by the restless mind. They are not real, they are ephemeral, passing with the winds of thought. The more you practice silence, the more these shadows fade, until what remains is the pure, radiant light of your true self, free from fear, free from doubt, and aligned with the infinite power of the cosmos. Silence is not a passive escape from fear, but an active tool for conquering it. By practicing silence, we learn to transcend the noise of the mind and reconnect with the deeper truths of our being. In the stillness of the soul, fear cannot survive, for it thrives on the distractions of the ego and the illusions of separation. When we cultivate inner silence, we discover that fear is nothing more than a passing shadow, and we are far more powerful than we ever realized. In the quiet of our own being, we find the strength to face any challenge, the clarity to navigate any uncertainty, and the courage to live fully, free from the bonds of fear. Mystical Willpower, the Key to Overcoming Fear Willpower, in the teachings of ancient mystics, is more than just a function of personal discipline. It is the force that binds the soul to the cosmic will and grants the ability to shape reality. It is through the focused application of the will that one can rise above fear, which is often the result of a fragmented or weakened will. Fear, as seen through the lens of Gnosticism, Hermeticism, and the occult, is a force that distracts, confuses, and dissipates the power of the will. When willpower is aligned with higher spiritual truths, fear becomes a mere illusion, something that can be dissolved by the force of a steady, directed will. In mastering this force, the individual gains not only the ability to conquer fear but also the capacity to command life in alignment with the greater cosmic plan. The Hermetic tradition speaks of the will as the bridge between the divine and the material world. The first of the Hermetic principles, mentalism, asserts that the all is mind, meaning that all of creation begins with thought. Yet, thought alone is not sufficient to manifest reality. Willpower is the active force that brings thought into form. The mind conceives the idea, but it is the will that energizes and directs this idea into manifestation. Fear, from this perspective, is a mental blockage that hinders the flow of will, preventing the soul from acting upon its true intentions. When the will is clear and strong, fear cannot root itself in the psyche because there is no fragmentation, no doubt to fuel the fear. The power of will, then, becomes the key to dispelling the illusions that fear creates. In the Gnostic tradition, the will is understood as the driving force behind spiritual ascent. The Gnostics believed that the soul's journey was one of liberation from the false rulers of the material world, often symbolized as the Archons. These Archons, much like fear itself, exert control over the soul through ignorance and distraction. They bind the soul to lower desires, keeping it from realizing its divine potential. The Gnostic path requires the will to be sharpened, focused, and aligned with the higher knowledge of the soul's true origins. As the will grows stronger, it breaks the chains of fear that the Archons use to maintain their hold. Through willpower, the soul remembers its connection to the divine and begins to reclaim its sovereignty over the material world. 
This inner strength is the power that frees one from the illusions of fear and grants the soul the courage to pursue its true path. Rosicrucian teachings offer yet another dimension of understanding willpower. For the Rosicrucians, the will is not only a tool for personal mastery but also a vehicle for spiritual service. They believed that the highest use of the will was to align it with the divine will, allowing the individual to become an instrument of higher purpose. Fear arises when the will is misaligned, when it serves the ego rather than the divine plan. By surrendering personal desires to a higher cause and focusing the will on that which is spiritually aligned, fear loses its foothold. The Rosicrucians taught that when the will is unified with divine purpose, it becomes invincible, and fear becomes irrelevant. This merging of personal and divine will is the path to true mastery, where fear cannot disturb the deep sense of alignment with cosmic order. To begin harnessing the power of will to overcome fear, one must first practice focusing the will on small, achievable tasks. This is a form of training, much like a muscle that must be strengthened before it can lift heavier weights. Start by setting an intention, a goal that is aligned with your higher self. Each day, commit to this intention with full concentration. When fear or doubt arises, do not engage with it. Simply return your focus to the goal, reaffirming your will. As you practice this, you will notice that the distractions of fear begin to lose their power over you. Your will becomes more refined, more precise, and capable of cutting through the fog of uncertainty. In time, this daily practice of focused will strengthen your ability to confront larger fears with calm determination. A powerful ritual to align the will and dispel fear is the ancient visualization of the pentagram. The pentagram, a symbol of protection and power in many occult traditions, represents the mastery of the spirit over the material elements. In this ritual, visualize a bright, radiant pentagram before you. As you breathe in, imagine drawing in strength and willpower from the cosmos. As you exhale, imagine any fears or doubts leaving your body, being burned away by the light of the pentagram. With each breath, your will grows stronger, and fear diminishes. In the final stages of the ritual, see the pentagram expanding, surrounding your entire being with its protective light. Here, within the circle of your will, no fear can enter. You are shielded, empowered, and aligned with the forces of the universe. This ritual, practiced consistently, builds an unshakable sense of inner strength, rooted in the power of will. As you strengthen your will, you will begin to notice a shift not only in how you respond to fear but in how you interact with the world at large. The ability to harness your will opens the door to greater freedom, as you are no longer held back by the limitations that fear imposes. You become more decisive, more focused, and more capable of manifesting your desires without hesitation. The world itself begins to respond to the force of your will aligning with your intentions in subtle and profound ways. This is the secret power of will, known to the ancient mystics, it not only conquers fear but also transforms reality, bending the fabric of the cosmos to your purpose. Through willpower, you reclaim your rightful place as a co-creator with the divine, shaping your life and destiny with purpose and precision. Mystical willpower is the key to overcoming fear because it aligns the individual with the greater currents of cosmic order. Fear thrives on fragmentation, on the disconnection between thought, emotion, and action. But willpower, when honed and focused, unites these forces, creating a powerful current that fear cannot withstand. Whether through Hermetic, Gnostic, or Rosicrucian practices, the development of willpower is essential to transcending the limitations imposed by fear. As your will strengthens, you rise above the illusions of fear, moving through life with clarity, purpose, and divine authority. Through this mastery of will, you become the architect of your own fate, free from the chains of fear that once held you bound. The Role of Archetypes in Fear 
In the labyrinth of the soul, where fear and courage are constantly engaged in a delicate dance, archetypes serve as ancient, universal patterns that offer insight into our subconscious minds. These archetypes, as understood in esoteric traditions like Gnosticism and Jungian psychology, are symbolic figures and forces that embody different aspects of the human experience. They emerge from the collective unconscious, shaping our behaviors, thoughts, and emotions. In the context of fear, archetypes help us understand how deep-seated patterns influence our reactions to life's challenges. By recognizing these archetypes within ourselves, we can begin to unlock the hidden wisdom they hold enabling us to transcend fear and embrace personal mastery. The archetype of the shadow is perhaps the most profound in its relationship to fear. This concept, originally introduced by Carl Jung but deeply rooted in esoteric traditions, represents the hidden or suppressed parts of the psyche. The shadow contains all that we fear, reject, or deny within ourselves, our darker impulses, unresolved trauma, and the unconscious fears we have yet to confront. In Gnostic terms, the shadow could be likened to the archons, those dark, controlling forces that keep us bound to ignorance and limitation. When we avoid or deny the shadow, we give it power over us. Fear thrives in the unexamined corners of our psyche, feeding on the parts of ourselves we refuse to acknowledge. To conquer fear, one must engage in the work of integrating the shadow, for only by bringing it into the light can we dissolve its hold over our lives. In esoteric traditions, the archetype of the hero also plays a crucial role in overcoming fear. The hero represents the aspect of the self that embarks on a journey of transformation, facing trials, challenges, and adversaries along the way. This journey, often referred to as the hero's journey, is symbolic of the inner quest to overcome fear and ignorance. The hero must descend into the unknown, confront the shadow, and emerge with a deeper understanding of the self. The hero archetype teaches us that fear is not something to be avoided but something to be confronted and transcended. Every challenge that provokes fear is an opportunity for the hero within to grow stronger. By recognizing the hero archetype within ourselves, we can frame our fears not as obstacles, but as initiations into greater levels of consciousness and empowerment. Another key archetype in the esoteric understanding of fear is the warrior. The warrior is not merely a symbol of physical strength or combat. It represents the internal force of will that stands unwavering in the face of adversity. In occult and mystical traditions, the warrior is closely tied to the idea of spiritual discipline and inner fortitude. Fear, from the perspective of the warrior archetype, is a test of resolve, a challenge to one's inner strength. The warrior does not flee from fear but faces it with clarity and purpose, knowing that each confrontation is a sharpening of the soul's edge. By embodying the warrior archetype, we learn to stand our ground, not only in external battles but in the internal conflicts that fear stirs within us. This archetype teaches us that true mastery comes from courageously engaging with fear and using it as fuel for transformation. The sage archetype offers another profound approach to fear, teaching us that wisdom, gained through experience and contemplation, is the ultimate antidote to fear. The sage represents the aspect of the self that seeks knowledge, understanding, and enlightenment. In Gnosticism, the sage is the one who seeks gnosis, direct knowledge of the divine, and through this knowledge, dispels the illusions of fear and ignorance. Fear often arises from what we do not know or understand, and the sage archetype encourages us to confront fear with curiosity and openness. The more we seek to understand the nature of our fears, the less control they have over us. The sage does not react to fear with panic but examines it calmly, asking, what can this fear teach me? Through the wisdom of the sage, we learn that fear is often an illusion, a veil obscuring deeper truths that, once revealed, lead to liberation.
Integrating these archetypes into our conscious awareness is a powerful method for transforming fear. Each archetype offers a different approach to fear. The shadow helps us confront our repressed fears. The hero teaches us to embrace challenges as growth opportunities. The warrior instills in us the strength to stand firm in adversity. And the sage guides us to approach fear with wisdom and understanding. By recognizing and embodying these archetypes, we gain access to a wealth of inner resources that allow us to confront and transcend fear. The key to this integration lies in self-awareness, acknowledging which archetype is active within us at any given moment and consciously choosing to draw upon its strengths to overcome fear. To begin this process of archetypal integration, one must first embark on a journey of self-inquiry and reflection. Through journaling or meditation, explore the fears that frequently arise in your life and consider which archetype may hold the key to addressing them. For example, if your fears are rooted in unresolved trauma or repressed emotions, the shadow archetype may be at play, signaling the need for deeper healing and self-acceptance. If you are facing a significant challenge or life transition, the hero archetype may be calling you to step into the unknown with courage and faith. In moments of confrontation or adversity, the warrior may be your guide, helping you to stand strong and remain centered. And in times of doubt or confusion, the sage can offer the wisdom needed to see through the illusions of fear. An essential practice for integrating these archetypes is shadow work. This involves consciously exploring the aspects of yourself that you fear or reject, bringing them into the light of awareness. Begin by identifying a specific fear or limiting belief that holds you back. Ask yourself what deeper, unresolved emotion or experience may be feeding this fear. Then, in meditation or journaling, imagine confronting this fear in the form of a shadow figure. Engage with this figure, asking what it wants to teach you, and offering it compassion and understanding. Through this process, you begin to reclaim the parts of yourself that have been disowned, reducing the power that fear has over you. The esoteric exploration of archetypes offers profound insights into the nature of fear and how it can be transcended. By working with archetypes such as the shadow, hero, warrior, and sage, we gain access to inner wisdom and strength that allows us to face our fears with courage and clarity. These archetypes are not external figures but aspects of our own consciousness, waiting to be activated and integrated. When we engage with these archetypes, we transform fear from a paralyzing force into a catalyst for personal and spiritual growth. The journey to mastering fear is, ultimately, a journey of self-discovery, where each confrontation with fear leads us closer to the realization of our true potential. Through this process, we not only conquer fear but also unlock the deeper wisdom and power that reside within us. The Esoteric Meaning of Courage Courage, in its truest form, is not simply the absence of fear, but the mastery of it. From the deepest recesses of esoteric thought, courage is revered as one of the most vital virtues on the spiritual path. In mystical traditions like those of the Gnostics, Hermeticists, and Rosicrucians, courage is seen not only as a necessary quality for spiritual progress but as a force that bridges the mundane with the divine. It is a power that emerges from the heart, where the individual connects to both their higher self and the universal will. Courage, from this vantage point, is not merely a reaction to danger or adversity, it is the conscious choice to walk the path of light, even when darkness seems insurmountable. In the teachings of ancient wisdom traditions, courage is deeply intertwined with the concept of spiritual initiation. The initiate, upon stepping into the mysteries, must pass through the veil of fear to access higher knowledge. The fear that arises during this process is not merely a personal emotion. It represents the illusory barriers set up by the lower mind, often reinforced by the forces of ignorance or what the Gnostics called the Archons. To pass beyond these limitations requires courage, for one must face not only the external challenges of life but also the inner demons of doubt, 
insecurity, and despair. In this sense, courage becomes an act of inner alchemy, transmuting fear into wisdom and strength, a process that is necessary for all who seek enlightenment. The heart, as understood in many esoteric traditions, is the center of courage. It is more than a physical organ, it is a spiritual gateway through which divine energy flows. In Hermetricism and Rosicrucianism, the heart chakra, or the center of love and courage, is seen as the seat of the soul's strength. When one is connected to the heart, fear loses its grip because the heart's energy is expansive, while fear is contractive. The courage of the heart allows individuals to move beyond the limitations of the ego and the illusions of separateness. It is in the heart that one encounters the truth of their connection to the infinite. This realization empowers the individual to face challenges with an unshakable sense of peace and resilience. True courage, according to esoteric philosophy, is not about brute force or dominance over others. Instead, it is about maintaining inner harmony in the face of outer chaos. It is about holding steady in one's inner knowing, even when external circumstances seem overwhelming. This idea of courage aligns with the Gnostic pursuit of Gnosis, or divine knowledge. The Gnostics taught that courage is essential for those who seek to know themselves and the divine, for the path of self-discovery is fraught with the need to overcome deep-seated fears, illusions, and false realities. In the journey to uncover the divine spark within, courage is the force that propels the seeker forward refusing to be held back by the distractions and deceptions of the material world. To cultivate esoteric courage, one must begin by understanding fear as an illusion, a shadow cast by the mind that seeks to protect itself from the unknown. But in the mystical traditions, it is the unknown that holds the key to transformation. Therefore, fear must be met with the open-hearted bravery of one who trusts in the greater purpose of their spiritual journey. A powerful practice for developing courage is to meditate on the heart chakra, visualizing it as a radiant, golden center of energy. As you breathe deeply, imagine this golden light expanding, filling your entire being with warmth and strength. As it grows, feel the energy of courage flooding your system, dissolving fear and filling the space with confidence and clarity. This simple meditation can be used daily to strengthen your connection to the heart and its inherent courage. Another way to cultivate courage is to face fear directly, acknowledging it without judgment. Fear, when met with compassion and understanding, often reveals itself to be far less daunting than it appears. In esoteric traditions, there is a practice of invoking sacred symbols or mantras that represent courage and strength. For example, in the Hermetic tradition, the symbol of the lion often represents the solar force of courage and the power of the will. Meditating on the image of the lion, or invoking its energy through visualization or ritual, can help to anchor one's willpower and courage in moments of uncertainty or fear. Ultimately, courage is not a destination, but a constant practice. It is the continual choice to align oneself with the highest aspects of being even when faced with the lowest. Esoterically, courage is seen as the key to unlocking the mysteries of the soul, for without it, one cannot advance along the path of spiritual evolution. It is said in Rosicrucian teachings that the greatest initiates are those who have passed through their darkest fears and emerged with the light of understanding. This light of understanding is not the absence of fear but the awareness that fear is simply a veil, a temporary shadow that obscures the eternal truth of the soul's power and divinity. Courage in esoteric terms is not simply an emotional state but a profound spiritual force. It arises from the heart and aligns us with our higher purpose, allowing us to transcend the limitations imposed by fear and doubt. The teachings of the Gnostics, Hermeticists, and Rosicrucians remind us that courage is an essential quality for those on the path to enlightenment. By cultivating courage, we not only face our fears but also transform them into the fuel for our spiritual ascent. Through meditation, visualization, and inner work, 
we can access the wellspring of courage within, enabling us to walk the path of the soul with strength, grace, and unwavering determination. Rituals to Banish Fear, Occult Tools for Mastery Rituals, in their most profound sense, are sacred acts that bridge the visible and invisible worlds. In the esoteric traditions, from Hermeticism to Rosicrucianism, rituals serve as tools to access the deeper layers of consciousness, allowing practitioners to channel divine energies and affect change in both the internal and external realms. When it comes to fear, rituals offer a powerful method for transmuting fear into courage, for breaking the chains of limiting beliefs, and for asserting dominion over the subconscious forces that keep us bound in states of anxiety and doubt. A well-structured ritual can dissolve fear's grip, creating a shift in the very fabric of one's being. To understand the potency of rituals in banishing fear, we must first recognize how fear operates on multiple levels of our existence. Fear is not merely a mental construct, it infiltrates our emotional body, lodges itself within our energetic field, and often manifests in physical tension or unease. In occult traditions, fear is seen as a dense, low-frequency vibration that disrupts the natural harmony of the self. This disharmony not only blocks spiritual progress but also impedes one's ability to manifest their highest potential. Rituals work to restore balance by clearing these dense energies and opening pathways for higher, more refined energies to flow through. The first step in any ritual designed to banish fear is the creation of sacred space. Sacred space is not simply a physical location but a state of being, an energetic environment that supports spiritual work. Traditionally, sacred space is consecrated through the use of symbols, elements, and invocations. For example, in the Hermetic tradition, the pentagram is often used to invoke protection and dispel negative forces. Similarly, in Rosicrucian rituals, the rose and the cross symbolize the union of spirit and matter, creating a harmonious field in which transformation can occur. To begin, clear your space of distractions, light candles, and incense, and mentally visualize a circle of protection surrounding you. This circle serves as a boundary between the mundane world and the spiritual realms, allowing only energies that align with your intention to enter. Once the sacred space is established, the next phase involves the invocation of higher forces. In esoteric rituals, invocations are calls to divine or cosmic energies that can aid in the banishing of fear. These energies can be personified as deities, angelic beings, or archetypal forces. For example, one might invoke Archangel Michael, who in many mystical traditions represents the sword of truth and protection. His energy is one of strength, clarity, and the cutting away of illusions, making him an ideal figure to call upon when seeking to banish fear. Alternatively, the Hermetic practitioner may invoke the force of the sun, seen as the ultimate symbol of light, life, and courage, through the ancient Egyptian deity Ra or the Roman god Apollo. These invocations, whether verbalized aloud or held silently in the heart, align the practitioner with forces far greater than their individual self, providing the energetic support needed to confront and dissolve fear. The heart of the ritual is the act of banishment itself. Banishment rituals work to expel the energies of fear from the mind, body, and spirit, purging them from the individual's energy field. In hermetic and ceremonial magic traditions, the use of sacred words, symbols, and gestures is essential. One of the most well-known banishing rituals is the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram, LBRP, which involves drawing the pentagram in the air and invoking the names of divine forces at each point of the compass. This ritual is designed to cleanse the practitioner's aura and environment, creating a shield of light that repels lower energies. The act of drawing the pentagram, combined with the sacred intonations of divine names, establishes a powerful protective force that banishes fear at its root. As you perform the ritual, visualize the pentagram blazing with light, radiating strength and courage, 
while any lingering fear dissolves into nothingness. In addition to traditional banishing rituals, visualization and affirmation play a crucial role in transforming fear. Visualization is the art of creating mental images that influence the subconscious mind, while affirmations are statements of power that reprogram belief systems. To banish fear, one might visualize themselves standing within a brilliant sphere of light, completely protected from any negative forces. As they breathe in, they draw in the light of courage and strength, as they exhale, they release all fear and doubt. Simultaneously, affirmations such as, I am fearless, I am in control of my reality, or, I am aligned with divine protection, can be repeated. These affirmations, when spoken with conviction, work to rewire the subconscious mind, dissolving the habitual patterns of fear that may have taken root. The final aspect of the ritual is closing the sacred space and grounding the energies raised. This step is crucial, for after engaging with powerful forces, it is necessary to return to the ordinary state of consciousness with clarity and balance. In many esoteric traditions, grounding is achieved by offering gratitude to the forces invoked and by visualizing the excess energy flowing into the earth, where it is absorbed and neutralized. This act of grounding ensures that the energies released during the ritual are properly integrated and that the practitioner is left feeling centered, empowered, and free from fear. Rituals offer a profound and structured method for banishing fear, drawing on ancient wisdom and practices that have been used for millennia to confront and dissolve the darker aspects of the self. By creating sacred space, invoking higher forces, and using the potent symbols and gestures of ritual magic, one can shift their internal landscape, expelling the energies of fear and replacing them with courage, strength, and clarity. These rituals, when practiced consistently, allow individuals to assert control over their fears and their destiny, walking the path of spiritual mastery with confidence and grace. The Path to Freedom, Living Without Fear the ultimate goal of all spiritual practice is freedom. Freedom from fear, freedom from the illusions of the ego, and freedom from the limitations of the material world. In the mystical traditions of Gnosticism, Rosicrucianism, and Hermeticism, this freedom is not a passive state but an active, conscious liberation of the soul. It is a process of awakening to one's true nature as a divine being unshackled by the illusions that bind most of humanity to fear and ignorance. To live without fear is to live in alignment with the divine will, fully aware of the infinite potential that lies within. Fearlessness, in this context, is not the absence of caution or discernment, but the transcendent realization that nothing can harm the true essence of who you are. To live without fear, one must first come to understand fear as a form of bondage. In Gnostic teachings, fear is often tied to the Demiurge, a false god who creates a world of deception and ignorance. This figure represents the material forces that seek to trap the soul in a cycle of fear and attachment, keeping it from realizing its divine origins. The journey of the Gnostic is one of peeling back the layers of this illusion, recognizing that the fears that arise from the material world are part of the great deception. The fear of death, the fear of failure, and the fear of the unknown are all constructs of a false reality. They are chains forged by the ego to maintain control, preventing the soul from ascending to higher realms of consciousness. In transcending fear, one must confront the ego directly. The ego thrives on fear because it defines itself through separation, from others, from the divine, and from the infinite possibilities of existence. It creates an identity based on limitations, convincing you that you are small, fragile, and in need of constant protection. Fear, in this sense, is the ego's weapon, a tool it uses to keep you in a state of contraction. However, once you begin to recognize the illusions that the ego weaves, the power of fear diminishes. You come to see that fear is not an intrinsic part of your being but a shadow cast by the ego's distorted perceptions. 
True freedom comes from dissolving this false sense of self and embracing the vast, boundless nature of the soul. Living without fear requires an ongoing practice of mindfulness and spiritual alignment. It is not a state that can be achieved once and for all, but a path that must be walked daily. Each moment presents an opportunity to choose between fear and love, between contraction and expansion. The practices outlined in this book, rituals, meditations, and affirmations, serve as tools to help you remain aligned with your highest self, even in the face of fear. When fear arises, rather than reacting from a place of panic or avoidance, you can meet it with calm awareness, understanding that it is merely a reflection of the ego's desire to remain in control. Through consistent practice, the habit of fear can be replaced with a deep sense of inner peace, one that is rooted in the knowledge that you are an eternal, infinite being. As you continue to walk the path of spiritual mastery, you will find that the more you release fear, the more powerfully you are able to manifest your true desires. Fear is one of the greatest obstacles to manifestation because it clouds the mind and scatters the energies needed to bring your intentions into reality. When fear is banished, the mind becomes clear and focused, and the energies of the soul can flow freely toward your goals. This is the essence of fearless manifestation, the ability to create without doubt, without hesitation, and without attachment to the outcome. It is the recognition that you are a co-creator with the divine, and that your thoughts and intentions have the power to shape reality in alignment with the universal will. The path to freedom is a path of fearlessness, a journey toward the realization of your divine nature. By overcoming the illusions of fear, you open the door to a life of limitless potential, where the barriers of the material world can no longer hold you back. The practices and teachings shared in this book are designed to guide you along this path, helping you to break free from the chains of fear and step fully into your power. As you continue to integrate these teachings into your daily life, you will find that fear loses its grip on you, and in its place, you will discover a deep, abiding sense of peace and empowerment. This is the gift of Gnosis, the secret knowledge that liberates the soul from all forms of bondage and allows it to soar freely into the infinite. Now, as you close this chapter, reflect on the journey you have taken. You have learned to confront your fears, to transmute them into wisdom, and to reclaim your power as a sovereign being. You have walked through the corridors of ancient knowledge and unlocked the mysteries of the soul. This journey is not over, it is only beginning. The path of mastery is an eternal one, a continuous unfolding of deeper and deeper layers of truth. As you move forward, remember that fear has no place in your heart. You are a being of light, a creator of worlds, and nothing can stand in the way of your divine purpose. Embrace your freedom, and live fearlessly in the light of your true self. As we approach the conclusion, if you've been enjoying the audiobook, don't forget to like the video. Let me know in the comments what your biggest takeaway has been. Embracing Mastery and the Infinite Path The journey toward mastering fear, transmuting limiting beliefs, and reclaiming one's power is a lifelong quest. Through the teachings of the ancients, the hidden wisdom of the Gnostics, the alchemical transformations of the Rosicrucians, and the sacred principles of Hermeticism, you have ventured into the deepest recesses of your soul, awakening a truth that transcends the mundane reality. You have begun to see that fear is not the adversary it once appeared to be, but a guide, an initiator into higher states of consciousness, drawing you ever closer to your divine nature. Throughout the pages of this book, you have learned to uncover the layers of deception that once kept you bound to limiting beliefs and fears. These illusions, carefully crafted by the ego and sustained by societal conditioning, have long hidden the radiant truth of who you are. But now, standing at the edge of a new horizon, you realize that these limitations no longer serve you. The tools you have gathered, the rituals, meditations, and inner exercises, are not just practices, they are keys to unlocking the doors of personal sovereignty. 
With each chapter, you have strengthened your inner will, sharpened your mind, and aligned your soul with its highest calling. Fear, once a shadow lingering at the edge of your awareness, has been transmuted into a source of strength, showing you the path to true mastery. As you integrate this sacred knowledge into your life, understand that mastery is not a destination but a perpetual unfolding. The ancients, in their wisdom, knew that the path of initiation and spiritual growth was a cycle, an ever-expanding spiral that leads the seeker deeper into the mysteries of existence. To conquer fear is not merely to overcome individual anxieties but to transcend the very concept of fear itself. The more you walk this path, the more you will realize that fear arises from separation, from seeing yourself as disconnected from the divine source, from others, and from your true purpose. But now you know that there is no separation. The spark of the divine resides within you, waiting to be fully realized in every thought, action, and moment. The esoteric traditions we have explored together teach that the universe itself is a reflection of the mind, and thus mastery begins within. Each fear you face is an opportunity to harmonize your inner world with the outer cosmos. When you dissolve the illusions that keep you bound to fear, you align yourself with the greater laws of the universe, laws that operate in harmony, balance, and infinite potential. By mastering fear, you no longer react to life, instead, you consciously create it. This is the essence of self-mastery, the art of living as a co-creator with the divine. You shape your reality not through force but through alignment, knowing that the universe responds to your thoughts, intentions, and inner clarity. Now, as you step forward into your life, remember that the teachings you have absorbed are not merely abstract concepts, but living wisdom meant to be applied daily. Every moment offers you a choice to succumb to fear and limitation, or to rise above, invoking the knowledge of your true power. This choice, repeated over time, creates a new reality, one where you no longer live as a victim of circumstance but as a master of your destiny. The sacred rituals and meditations you have learned are tools to continually realign you with your highest self, allowing you to maintain your center even in the face of challenges. Fear may still arise, but now you know its purpose, and you have the power to transform it. Mastery is not a solitary endeavor. It is a process of continual growth, learning, and expansion, one that brings you into deeper connection with the world around you and with the universal consciousness that flows through all things. The journey you have embarked upon is both deeply personal and profoundly universal. As you rise into your own power, you uplift others as well, for mastery radiates outward, transforming not only your life but the lives of those you touch. This is the path of the mystic, the initiate, the one who walks between worlds, carrying the light of ancient wisdom into the present moment. In closing, know that the path of freedom, the path of living without fear, is an eternal one. It is the journey of the soul from ignorance to knowledge, from darkness to light. As you continue on this path, hold the truth close. You are a divine being, capable of shaping your reality and transcending all that seeks to limit you. Fear has no power over you, for you are the master of your mind, the architect of your life, and the bearer of the ancient wisdom that has been passed down through the ages. Live in this truth, walk in this power, and remember that the journey is endless, the potential for growth infinite, and the light within you boundless. The path to true freedom has no end, 